Hey guys, Lawrence DeMonaco here, president of Rare Breed Triggers. I'm shooting this video today to talk about one very specific issue. I want to talk about all the forced reset triggers that have been unlawfully seized by the ATF. I feel like it's safe to assume that most of you are already aware that Judge Reed O'Connor out of the Northern District of Texas has denied the government's request to stay the injunctive relief he granted in his final judgment ruling that forced reset triggers are not machine guns. This means the protections established by the court's final judgment will remain in place during the government's appeal to the Fifth Circuit. But with that said, Judge O'Connor did extend the government's deadline on two specific issues. The ATF now has until February 22nd to return all seized triggers and to send out remedial notices to those affected. Even still, Judge O'Connor made it crystal clear this is not a stay. It is only an extension of the deadline. Now, there is a caveat to that. Judge O'Connor also made it clear that for members of NAGR and TGR or downstream customers of a commercial member of NAGR or TGR, the ATF is obligated to return those triggers promptly upon request. I want to be very clear here. If you're a member of the National Association for Gun Rights, this means you. If you're a member of Texas Gun Rights, this means you too. Or if you purchase an FRT from a commercial member of either NAGR, like Rare Breed Triggers, or commercial member of TGR, this means you as well. So if you're a member or the downstream customer of an organizational member, here's what I want you to do. Number one, send an email to the National Association for Gun Rights at frt at gunrights.com. Again, frt at gunrights.com. Number two, put, I want my FRT back in the subject line. Number three, include your name, phone number, and email address. And number four, include your NAGR or TGR membership number or any other membership info you may have. And last, number five, attach the ATF seizure form or any other receipt that they may have provided you. Now, once again, put that together and email it to frt at gunrights.com with the subject line, I want my FRT back. Now, upon receiving these emails, the amazing folks at NAGR are going to create a running list of people that fall into this category and work with counsel to submit weekly demands to the ATF that your force reset triggers be returned. So here's your chance. Right now, if the ATF unlawfully sees your force reset trigger and you fall into one of these categories, Follow the steps that I've just outlined and send NAGR an email. Let's put the wheels in motion and get your trigger back. And now, I'd like to close by saying that if you're not yet a member of the National Association for Gun Rights, you absolutely should be. The National Association for Gun Rights is the only group that stepped up and was willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with me in the fight for forced reset triggers. And for that, I will be forever grateful. So take a look. There will be a link somewhere around here in the video. You can click it and become a member. And as always, thank you for your support. Take care and God bless. All right, y'all. So you just heard from Lawrence and I'm Hannah Hill. And I wanted to give you a quick update on the background of the case, because since Lawrence filmed that, we've had a few developments that I wanted to go over. And this really puts what you just heard from Lawrence into a bit of the broader context. So as you know, the district court gave us final judgment and the relief ordered by the court is a part of that, that if NAGR members come back to the ATF with sufficient proof and say, give me my trigger back, I'm a member, then the ATF actually has to do that. Now, the ATF is not going to go down without a fight. Obviously, we know this about the ATF. So they have appealed this to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. We've read their opening brief. Our lawyers are preparing their response right now. But their brief is full of the exact same tired, nonsensical arguments that have secured the ATF six successive losses to our legal team in this case. They have nothing new to say on the subject, and they can't get around the fact that case law is on our side. Multiple Supreme Court precedents, as well as Fifth Circuit precedents, because Cargill was a Fifth Circuit case before it went to the Supreme Court. Cargill, as you know, is about the bump stock, where the ATF said, okay, we want to twist the definition of machine gun in federal statute so that we can then ban bump stocks. Well, the Supreme Court and the Fifth Circuit both have said you can't do that. The same applies to forced reset triggers. It's the exact same set of legal arguments. You take out the word bump stock, you put in the word forced reset trigger, 
exact same case law, exact same arguments, exact same ruling. So we're very confident that the Fifth Circuit is going to, for the second time, rule in our favor. The first time was when they refused to stay the lower court's ruling when the ATF asked them to do that earlier in the case. So now that they're ruling on a final judgment and they have the Supreme Court's Cargill precedent, we are very confident we're in a super strong position. But we know the ATF's not going to go down without a fight, as I said. Every step of the way, they are fighting to the nail for their forced reset trigger ban. And their argument is that forced reset triggers are very, very different from bump stocks. Well, it's a different accessory, yes. But the legal arguments, as I said, are the exact same thing. So not only do we have the Cargill precedent on our side, we also have the Supreme Court's decision in Loper Bright, which struck down Chevron deference. And Chevron deference is basically, you know, we err on the side of deferring to the agency and their interpretation of the law. Well, that doctrine's gone now. And the ATF has tried to backdoor it into the case and say, well, we're not going to call it Chevron deference, but we're going to use those exact same arguments. Well, the district court said you can't do that. We know the Fifth Circuit's probably going to say the same thing. So we're in a very, very strong position. And as I said, the ATF has lost six times, right? Six separate things they've asked for in the course of this case. Sometimes it's relief, sometimes it's injunction, sometimes it stays pending appeal. Every single time they've lost. Some of those rulings were pre-Cargill from the Supreme Court. Some are post-Cargill. But the one thing that has stayed consistent is that the ATF doesn't have a leg to stand on. Now, the other thing that has stayed consistent is the ATF's not going to give up without a fight. So we expect that no matter how the Fifth Circuit rules, the ATF will probably take this to the Supreme Court where our legal team will be happy to meet them and simply ask the Supreme Court to just uphold what they've already said in Cargill. So that's a quick update for you on this case. The next step is for our attorneys to file our response, and then after that, we hope to get an oral argument date. The ATF has asked for one at the Fifth Circuit, and we will be happy to meet them there. So that's where things stand. Again, if you're an NAGR member and you've had a forced reset trigger confiscated by the ATF, refer back to what Lawrence was talking about earlier in his video and keep us posted on how we can be of assistance. Thank you very much.